Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Truth Seekers Podcast. A truth seeker is someone who wants to know the truth. They search for what's true and they won't rest until they find it. I am a truth seeker, and if you are too, then you've come to the right place where we will search for truth each week in the stories of the Bible. In our last episode, we learned that sadly the Israelites would wander the desert for 40 years waiting for the time when their children would grow up and enter the promised land. That's a long time to wander around the desert. And that was a lot of people to wander together in the desert. It's not a surprise then that all of the surrounding nations heard about this great group of people wandering in the desert. You see, even in the desert, the Israelites had to fight their enemies. But every enemy they fought, the Lord gave them the victory. They were so victorious that one king in particular became a bit worried. This king's name was Balak. Balak was the king of Moab, and all of the people who lived in Moab were called the Moabites. The Moabites were afraid and terrified of the Israelites because there were so many of them. The Moabites said to each other, This large group of people is going to lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. So King Balak, the king of Moab, decided that he was going to do something about this group of Israelites. He was not going to let the Israelites terrify him and his people. So King Balak sent for his messengers. He said to his messengers, Go and find a man by the name of Balaam. He is a priest, and he will be able to put curses on these Israelites. Tell him, a people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the land and have settled next to me. Now come and put a curse on these people, because they are too powerful for me. Perhaps then I will be able to drive them out of the country." For I know that those you put a curse on will be cursed, and those you bless will be blessed. So the messengers left Moab and took money with them to give to Balaam, in hopes that he would come and curse the Israelites for them. When they found Balaam, they came to him and told him what the king had said. So Balaam told the men to stay the night, and he would bring them back an answer in the morning. That night the Lord came to Balaam and said, Do not go with them. You must not put a curse on the Israelites, my chosen people, because they are blessed. So the next morning Balaam got up and said to the king's messengers, Go back to your own country, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the Moabite messengers returned to the king and said, Balaam has refused to come with us. But the king would not accept that. This time he sent even more messengers, and he sent very important princes to try to persuade Balaam to curse the Israelites. They came back to Balaam and said, This is what the king of Moab says. Do not let anything keep you from coming to me, because I will reward you greatly and do whatever you say. Come and put a curse on these people for me. But Balaam answered them, Even if the king gave me his palace filled with silver and gold, I could not do anything great or small to go beyond the command of the Lord. Now stay here again tonight, and I will find out what else the Lord will tell me. So that night, as the messenger slept, the Lord came to Balaam and said, Since these men have come a second time to summon you, go with them, but do only what I tell you. So Balaam got up in the morning saddled his donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. But something began to change in Balaam's heart. He started to think about the offer that the king gave him about the money he would give him if he cursed the Israelites. Balaam's heart began to turn greedy, and all he could do was think about all that money he would get if he cursed the Israelites. He thought, it's just a curse. And then the Lord saw the heart of Balaam, that it was evil and greedy, and the Lord became angry with Balaam. And so Balaam set out on his donkey, but the angel of the Lord stood in the middle of the road to stop Balaam. 
Balaam could not see the angel of the Lord standing in the middle of the path to stop him, but Balaam's donkey did. And when Balaam's donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, she turned off the road into a field. Balaam began to beat the donkey to get her back on the road. He said, What are you doing, donkey? This is not the way to go. Get out of that field. As Balaam and the donkey continued down the road, the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between two vineyards with walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it. So he beat her again. Ow, he said, that's my foot. What are you doing, donkey? And then a third time the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn, either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam and he began to beat her a third time. But then the most amazing, incredible thing happened. The Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and she began to talk. Have you ever had an animal talk to you? Well, Balaam did. The donkey opened her mouth and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Balaam answered the donkey, You have made a fool of me. If I had a sword in my hand, I would strike you now. Then the donkey said, Am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, Balaam said. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. So he bowed low and fell face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to stand in your way, because your path is a reckless one before me. In your heart you have chosen to consider the offer of the king of Moab. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now, if you are displeased with me, I will go back. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. So Balaam went with the messengers and princes of the king. When the king heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the Moabite town on the edge of his territory. The king said to Balaam, Did I not send you an urgent summons? Why did you wait so long? Am I really not able to give you a great reward? Well, I have come to you now, said Balaam, but I can only speak what God puts in my mouth to speak. Then Balaam went with the king, and the king took Balaam to a high part of the country, where Balaam could look down over the land and he saw the Israelites camped in the desert. And the king waited anxiously for Balaam to curse the Israelites with his words. Balaam said to the king, Whatever the Lord reveals to me, I will tell you. So the Lord put a message in Balaam's mouth, and he said, How can I curse those whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce those whom the Lord has not denounced? From the rocky peaks I see them, from the heights I view them, I see a people who live apart and do not consider themselves one of the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number the fourth part of Israel? And the king said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I brought you here to curse these people, but you have done nothing but bless them. And Balaam said, I can only speak what the Lord puts in my mouth. Then the king said to him, Come with me to another place where you can see them. You will see only a part, but not all of them. From there you will curse them for me. So the king took Balaam to the top of another mountain, where Balaam could look down upon the Israelites. Balaam said to the king, Stay here while I meet with the Lord. The Lord met with Balaam and put a message in his mouth, and said, Go back to the king and give him this message. So he went to him and found him there, and Balaam looked down upon the Israelites. And do you think he would curse the Israelites this time? No. Balaam said, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. I have received a command to bless. 
He has blessed, and I cannot change it. No misfortune is seen in Jacob, no misery observed in Israel. The Lord their God is with them. The shout of the king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. They have the strength of a wild ox. There is no sorcery against Jacob. Then the king said to Balaam, Stop! Stop! Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. And Balaam said, Did I not tell you I must do whatever the Lord says? So then the king said to Balaam, Let me take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God to let you curse them there. So the king took Balaam to yet another mountain to curse the Israelites. Do you think Balaam will curse the Israelites this time? If you said no, then you are correct. Then the Spirit of God came upon Balaam and he said, How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel! Like valleys they spread out like gardens beside a river, like aloes planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. Water will flow from their buckets, their seed will have abundant water, their king will be great, and their kingdom will be exalted. Then King Moab's anger burned against Balaam. He struck his hands together and said to him, I summoned you to curse my enemies, but you have blessed them these three times. Now leave at once and go home. I said I would reward you, but the Lord has kept you from being rewarded. And Balaam said to the king, Did I not tell the messengers you sent me, even if the king gave me his palace filled with silver and gold, I could not do anything of my own accord, good or bad, to go beyond the command of the Lord, and I must say only what the Lord says. But let me say one more thing about God's chosen people. I see him now, but not now. I behold him. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. A ruler will come out of Jacob. Then Balaam got up and returned home, and the king of Moab went his own way. Who is Balaam talking about? Who is the star that would come out of Jacob? Who is the ruler that would rise up? Do you know that Balaam was looking forward to the time when Jesus would be born? He didn't know it then, and neither did King Moab, but Balaam just gave a prophecy that one day Jesus would be born to be the true king, the true ruler, the true star, the king who would come to save us. So what truth can we find from this story, true seekers? Did you notice that no matter how many times the king of Moab wanted to curse the Israelites, Balaam could only bless them? The Israelites were God's chosen people. Even though they grumbled and complained and lacked faith at times, the Lord was still with them and he would not let anyone hurt them or put a curse on them. They were blessed because they were the Lord's. Do you know that the same is true about you? You are a child of God. He loves you and he will not let anything or any weapon come against you. As you put your trust in him, he surrounds you and protects you. Have you ever struggled with fear? Maybe you have had fear that something bad might happen to you. The Bible says that the Lord is a shield around us and he knows the way that we take. You are blessed, not cursed. Next time you are tempted to fear, remember, you are blessed by the Lord and not even your enemies can come against you. If you'd like to read today's story in your Bible, you can find it in Numbers chapter 24. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode as we continue to follow the Israelites into their promised land after 40 long years of waiting in the desert. Let me pray with you before we go. Dear Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you that as your children, we never have to fear our enemies or anything that would try to come against us. You surround us with your protection and you have called us blessed. Thank you for your blessings in our lives. Amen. Thank you so much to those of you who have left comments and reviews for the podcast. It is so helpful and so appreciated. If you haven't had a chance to leave a review, I would so appreciate it. It helps others to find the podcast and learn about God too. And if you are interested in further Bible teaching, I have started a podcast over on Patreon where I am walking through the Bible teaching on the Old and New Testament. 
you can join to be a patron at patreon.com slash Sherilyn R. Grant. Thanks so much for listening, and I look forward to our time together next week.